I was cleaning the saw up recently and it dawned on me, I've had this thing for a little over three years now. And because of that, I've decided to do a three year review video. And there are two reasons why I've decided to do that. One, when I shot the first video reviewing this saw, I'd only used the tool for about six months. And people don't really care how a saw performs after six months, they care how well it performs after years of use. And two, maybe more importantly, the first video I shot was before I learned how to do video editing. So it was a little bit long, a little rambly, and the audio wasn't that great. So this is going to be a much more shorter, streamlined version. I'm gonna walk around the saw, see what's held up, what hasn't, redo the calibration checks that I did in the first one, and then wrap up with my overall likes and dislikes after three years. So this is what the front of the saw looked like six months after I first bought it. The reason I'm showing you this picture is so you can see where the decals used to be, because as you can see here, some of them have fallen off. The angle guide decal, which tells you at what angle your bevel is set, uh, was the first to go, fell off after about a year, but I never used it. I have a digital angle gauge that I always set to the tabletop and then to the blade to accurately set my bevel cuts, so that wasn't a problem. The spec sticker started to peel off. I just cut it off, not a big deal. And the model number stickers are also falling off. This might be a big deal to some, but I don't really care. So next up are the rails. These rails are made out of aluminum. They're not made out of steel, so I was worried how they would hold up, but uh, just kind of eyeballing it, it's not bad. There are no major dents, um, some nicks and dings, especially in some high clamped on areas, but Nothing really too bad on the front rail. And the back rail looks pretty good too. Nothing clamps onto the back rail like the front rail. The bearing of the fence rides on top of this rail. So all you have to do is make sure this is clean and you should be fine. So no dents, no dings. Back rail is in great shape. The cast irons held up pretty well. There are some scratches and some mistakes were made. A soda was put onto the cast iron, causing a couple of rings. And one night, someone left the garage door open and a raccoon tracked his muddy, wet paws across the top of the surface. So you can see the top left and the top right were spots that I really had to get some um, surface rust out. So they're a little faded. But otherwise, three to four times a year, I take mineral spirits, steel wool and sandpaper to the top. I give it a good thorough cleaning and then I treat the bear cast iron with bow shield t9 and that seems to do a very good job of keeping seasonal rust at bay this is the second blade i've had to buy for the saw but i bought this about two months ago so the first one lasted a pretty long time this is a freud 10 inch flat top grind blade the same as the first one was and i use this because it's really a necessity for things like box joints or splines uh, which i do a fair amount of i still have the first blade just has a few chipped teeth i will use it as my beater blade so calibration check one is going to be to flip the saw on and off very quickly to see if the blade wobbles or spins true. So about the same as the first test I did years ago. Maybe a little bit of wobble, but not that much. Calibration check two is to see if the miter slots are still parallel to the blade, and for that... I jigged up a shop-made uh, measuring device, which I can attach a dial indicator, any dial indicator will do, to a piece of wood, which attaches to um, a runner for the miter slot. So the key with this measurement is to make sure that you're A, going slow, and B, making sure you're applying consistent pressure to the same spot in that miter slot because the dial indicator will pick up even the slightest variations. And if there's some jiggling in that slot, that's gonna throw off your reading. But in any event, just go slow. And in doing that, I can tell that this is off a couple of thousandths to the left of the zero, which tells me that the blade is getting further away from the miter slot as I go down the slots. So this drawing illustrates what I'm talking about. This offcut represents the blade, and this sketch is the tabletop. The blade is getting further away from that left miter slot as we go down the table, but that's an easy fix. The blade can't move, but we can move the table to get parallel to that blade. It's a matter of loosening three of the four bolts that attach 
the tabletop to the table and pivoting around that one unloosened bolt in order to get the blade parallel to the miter slots. The manual describes all this in detail, but this is just sort of a pictorial representation. So this is one of the three bolts you need to loosen, and I'm showing you it doesn't take much at all. This is a half inch wrench, and it just takes maybe three quarters of a turn to a full turn. You don't need to take it off completely, just enough to get the table to move a little bit. So I've loosened three bolts here, here, and here. And I'm going to pivot around the one bolt I haven't loosened, pivoting to the right. And the way I'm going to do that is to hammer the back end of the saw toward the front, and that should parallel everything up. So after some back and forth, I was able to take out pretty much all the variation. This is the final check I'm doing, and if you look closely, you can see that the dial indicator doesn't really move much at all, which tells me I am pretty much as parallel as I can hope to be on this saw. Calibration check three is to see if the blade is 90 degrees to the table. And this time around, I'm using a precision straight edge, which has a lot more bearing surface, and I have the blade cranked all the way up. And pretty much just like the first test I did, um, it's as close to 90 as I can Hope to get it. I didn't see any daylight. I measured at the front. I measured in the middle, measured in the back. Everything seemed to be just as it should be, right at 90 degrees. So the fourth calibration check is to see if the fence is still 90 degrees to the table. And using my precision straight edge, I can tell you that it is not. It has uh, uh, gone out of square just a little bit uh, on the front and uh, toward the saw blade where the cut is made. Those are the real two operative points. Past the saw blade, it's not really that important, but uh, at the front and at the saw blade itself where the cut is made, those need to be 90 degrees to the table for sure. So this fence needs to be moved or canted to the left, and the way to do that is to, to adjust the set screw on the right bottom of the fence with the Allen wrench that's provided. If you needed to move the fence to the right, you would just adjust the left set screw. Once you have the fence to where it needs to be, you reattach the nut and tighten it down and you're good to go. And after some slight adjustment, as you can see here, the fence is now sitting at 90 degrees to the table. So the last calibration check is to make sure that the fence is perpendicular to the front of the table. But what I'm really checking for here is that the fence is parallel to the blade. So stay with me here. If the front of the table is perpendicular to the miter slots, which we can tell it is here, and the miter slots are parallel to the blade, then we know that if the fence is perpendicular to the front of the table, like the miter slot is, it too will be parallel to the blade, like the miter slot is. That's basic geometry. So the way I'm doing it is using a flat reference piece of oak something I know that's reliable and flat. I'm pressing it against the front of the saw and using a framing square and making sure the short end is contacting the oak along the entire length and just sighting down here along the long side of the square to make sure that it's 90 throughout and it looks to be. After three years, I can say that I both like and dislike this fence. What I like about the fence is the T-slot system because I can use that to attach things to the fence. What I don't like is that Grizzly doesn't even sell T-slot nuts that fit this fence. And that's a missed opportunity because a T-slot fence obviously is designed to attach things to, and without the proper fastener, we're sort of left to guess how we're supposed to be attaching things to it. Through trial and error, I found out that quarter inch 20 bolts and oval washers would work but it's not really our responsibility as consumers to have to guess. So if anyone from Grizzly is listening, I would strongly urge you guys to consider creating your the proper T-slot nuts to fit this fence system. I think that would go a long way in making this saw more appealing um, and valuable to the serious hobbyist um, or even the amateur because we would take advantage of that fence system. I obviously have made a stop block and a router table fence, which attaches on the opposite side of the table saw fence. You could also make things like sacrificial fences or vertical hold downs, but we need the right fasteners for the job. So something for Grizzly to consider. 
I also like that I can use this table as a router table. Um, I have this fence attached to my table saw fence. I have a video about that. I sunk this old Ryobi router table into the extension wing of the saw. I have a video explaining how I did that. And I also very recently um, attached some threaded inserts to the table in order to allow me to clamp these feather boards um, to put pressure on a workpiece against the fence. And I have a video about that as well. All together, this makes using this as a router table very easy, very straightforward. My dust collection's there, my fence is always there, my uh, accessories are always there. So that's another plus of this saw. What I don't like about the fence is the clamping system. I've just cleaned it, so it's working as well as it probably will now. But after a while, you will get dust and dirt and accumulation on the clamping pad and also uh, on the cam right about here. And that's going to cause it to A, be much harder to clamp down. It's going to be much tighter. And that will make it have a tendency to, when you unclamp it, to shift, which throws off your alignment. My first saw that I had was a DeWalt job site saw with a rack and pinion fence. I like that system much better. This system is kind of a pain. It needs a lot of TLC to work properly, and I'm just too lazy. I also like how everything that I use with the saw is really within an arm's length at all times. My feather board, my stop block, my push sticks, uh, my other push stick, the gripper, throat plate for dado inserts, and most things um, are hung on these magnetic hooks, which are lifesavers. Mm -hmm. I have my miter gauge, um, I have uh, some vertical hold downs as well. So storage on or around the saw using magnets is really nice and keeps everything at an arm's length at all times. So how did the price change? I dug up my old invoice from when I bought this thing in 2017. It got delivered in 2018. And when I bought it, it was 750 bucks. I think I used a coupon code to bring that cost down a bit. 34 bucks for lift gate service and about a hundred bucks for freight. So a grand total of about 900 bucks to get delivered to my door. The price of the saw itself has gone up to over a thousand. The price of freight has gone up to 150. So to get the saw to your door, you're looking at about 1200 bucks. And that's a difference of about $300 more. Um, it costs now to get to your door than it cost me back in late 2017. I suspect the same economic factors that have caused this saw to go up in price have also caused other table saws to go up in price. So even though this is more expensive, I'm guessing this is still a good bargain relative to other saws out there, but you're going to have to do your own research to see um, how expensive those other saws are compared to this one. So overall, am I happy with the purchase? Yes. This is a significant step up from any job site saw on the market, both in terms of quality, in terms of accuracy, um, in terms of durability. And I'm happy that I pulled the trigger. With that said, you have to know, if you don't already, this is not really a saw for a professional production shop. It's a little underpowered. The fence rail and the fence itself are not really meant to withstand the rigors of everyday production shop use but for a hobbyist or a serious amateur this is a very good saw and i've been very happy with my purchase